So how does Goblin Fever affect you and your decisions when you're on a turkey hunt? Well, we're going to be talking about that in this video, so you stay tuned. When we talk about goblin fever, we're talking about that feeling that you get once you see that gobbler. You know, uh, deer hunters would compare it to buck fever. You know, we all have had that encounter with that deer that we've been after. We've been hunting him for a while. We finally see him and he's coming closer and he's coming closer and he's coming closer. And man, we can go from zero, zero to a hundred just like that. I mean, we just, I mean, and you know, when we were a kid, uh, we could see a doe. <laughs> How many remembers that? We could see a doe and we just go all to pieces. Especially when we started bow hunting. We just sit there and almost shake because they get closer, 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 closer. And your heart would just keep pounding. That's why we go. But the same thing can happen in turkey hunting and we call it goblin fever and many times once we see that turkey once you see that turkey and he's strutting and he's coming in and you know that he's on his way and he's getting up there closer and closer man I'm telling you right now you can absolutely fall apart and then at the moment of truth right at this when, when you squeeze that trigger if you don't make the right decisions on when to shoot it can blow the whole thing and you miss and that is a heart sinking feeling when you miss and we've all done it we've all missed turkeys but you can miss less if you just learn how to control goblin fever now I'm not saying not have goblin fever I'm not saying to ever get over it <laughs> because I don't think that's possible and I don't want to get over it but uh, we want to control it and make the best possible decisions on when to shoot and you can do this just by doing a few little things Things. I know there's a lot of young hunters that watch this channel. I know there's a lot of new turkey hunters that watch this channel that may have been turkey hunting just two or three, four years. And you're just now getting a kind of a grip of it. And so this is really good information for you is to learn how to control at the moment of truth so you can make better shots and kill more turkey. The reason why most people miss is because they shoot too quick. It's just a fact. Whether it's deer hunting or turkey hunting, the reason why we make bad shots and we lose that deer because maybe... You you know, we shot way too quick and we was just a few inches off and instead of hitting him in the lungs, we hit him in the guts or the liver and we don't want to do that. But the reason why most people do that and they wind up losing their deer, especially bow hunters, is they shoot too quick. Deer starts coming in, he starts getting under about 40 yards and because we went out there and shot, you know, uh, groups out in the backyard or at the, at the range and we shot really tight groups at 40 yards, we think, okay, I can do this all day long. But then then that buck fever takes over and or, or maybe the deer is a little bit bit quarter and two or you know maybe he's not perfectly broadside or maybe he's quartering away a little bit and because of the angles and because of our you know adrenaline we make we just make bad shots when we could have just waited for the deer to come on up closer and we could have just waited for a better shot but we shot too quick same thing happens in turkey hunting same thing even though we're shotgun hunting uh, or bow hunting but m most people shotgun hunt you know turkey starts coming in we know our effective killer range is you know nowadays about 50 yards if you got a good turkey uh, gun and set up then you know you can get about 50 yards all right and once that turkey gets in there about you know 55 yards or 60 you know and we know he's getting really close and sometimes we misjudge the, the yardage because it you know we're, we're in that adrenaline mode that goblin fever mode and all of a sudden he does something that maybe gets us nervous and we shoot too quick all right it just happens now let me show you a video clip of what I'm talking about this now that I shot a few years ago he's coming up a field and right here he's in full strut he's about 55 to 60 yards right here now I know with my 20 gauge set up I know that I can shoot 55 yards if I have to but I don't want to I want to get them up as close as I can because that's the name of the game but as you can see he's in full strut right here all right I know he's coming looking for me but watch what happens right here he throws his head up he drops out of strut and he throws his head up really quick now many people would shoot right then even though that turkey's a little bit far out there the moment that they that they see that turkey throw their his head up really quick they automatically get nervous and say, oh, he saw something he don't like, I got to shoot, or, you know, he's seen me, I got to shoot, or I'm not going to get a shot. And they shoot way too quick. And if your gun is not set up properly to shoot them long shots, you're going to miss. 
That's just a fact. And even if you can shoot that far, you know what? Uh, the, the chances of you making a quick killing shot at long distances goes down more than if they're close. And the name of the game of turkey hunting is to get them close. 40 yards and under, even though you can shoot further. I have shot so many turkeys over the years at 10, 15, 20 yards when I could have shot them all day out there at 30, but I just let them, you know, keep, just keep coming on in and get right up there in my lap. That's the thrill of it. That's what makes us, that's what makes us just get, go all to pieces. That's what helps us just get that heart pounding experience once we get them up there close. That's why we turkey hunt. But I know this turkey is not going anywhere. Even though he's dropped down a strut and he's throwed his head up really quick and he, and, he, and he looks like maybe he's on alert. But I know by his body language, he's not on alert. He's just looking for me. So what do I do? I just I just know and I just let him keep coming. I know what he's doing and I just let him keep coming. And I wound up shooting him about 30 yards. Okay, so there you go. I didn't let Goblin Fever take me over. Unless that turkey walks, or, you know, starts walking away putting and he's walking away at a pretty good pace, he hasn't seen nothing. If he starts putting and walking away, then the game's up and you might have to make a, a long shot, all right? But if he hasn't done that and he drops out of strut or maybe he's just, you know, kind of looking, maybe he's bobbing his head up and down, he hasn't seen you. Just tell yourself everything's going to be okay. He hasn't seen me. Just let him keep coming. And, and the closer he gets, the bigger of your chance of making a better shot. Something else I do is I take a rangefinder. I use the Tidewee rangefinder. You can find them in the description of this video. We'll put the link up. But I use a rangefinder. And when I sit down to start working a turkey, then I, I usually can look out and say, okay, I kind of see my effective killing range, you know, with my gun set up. And I'll mark spots. Okay, that tree out there is 45. That tree stump out there is 50. All right, that clump of grass is, is a 55 or whatever the case, you know, or 56. Six, and I'll sit there and mark and I'll say, okay, once he comes into this area and once he comes into past that black tree or past that tree stuff, I know without a doubt I can kill him. All right? So it just gives you a little bit of uh, help and, and confidence that once he comes in, you can mark that tree stump or you can mark that black tree or you can mark that, uh, you know, you mark that uh, clump of grass or whatever that you mark and you say, okay, once he gets past that, I know I'm in business. And that way you don't wind up taking taking too far of a shot and just let him work on in into that circle. And I Once want he, that turkey to be as close as possible. But if I, if I see that he's starting to get a little bit nervous or whatever, then you can take the shot. So just remember to sort of mark your spots and that way when goblin fever kicks in, you know, okay, let him get past this tree stump. Let him get that, let him get past that, that little bush out there. Let him get, cause that I know is in my range. I've already raised it and I know it's going to happen. And then you can kind of talk to yourself and when he's out there a little bit beyond that you can be more patient and just say okay a little bit closer a little bit closer a little bit closer you know we all talk to ourselves don't we we all do it I still do it sometimes sit there and you talk to yourself that's right come on come on come on come on you know it helps calm your nerves. I know it don't make a difference, you know, like the turkey hears you or, or it changes anything, but it helps us to say, okay, come on, come on. That's right. You know, we all do it. It's all right. That's the fun of it. But once he comes in and he comes into that effective range, buddy, we know the party's about to begin and we are in business of making a good, quick killing shot. Something else you want to remember is to make sure that turkey's head is full stretched up, if possible. Don't shoot him in strut. Don't shoot him if he's if he's you know broadside to you and he's in strut, because then his head's kind of tucked back in them feathers, and many times you can miss, uh, even if you think you've got a clear shot. So cluck or do some kind of a little yelp, try to get his head up. We all know that, but sometimes young hunters don't. I know a lot of young hunters watch these videos. So make sure you can get that turkey's head up to where you can put your bead or your crosshair uh, on the base of that turkey's neck, and that way you've got a lot more room uh, for air and you've got a lot more better target. So again, goblin fever will take you over. Turkey's in strut, you just see his white head and you just shoot. Just calm down. He's not going anywhere and he'll come all the way in for you. Goblin fever is great. I'm not saying don't have it. I'm not saying to lose it at all. I'm just saying take moments. Take that little bit of moments to prepare for it and talk yourself through it and you will have more successful hunts, I promise you, at the moment of truth. Because the worst feeling in the world is to do all this hard work and then miss at the last moment. We've all done it and that's a sick feeling. But you can have less misses if you just control that goblin fever.
Make sure you do that and you will be packing more turkeys out this coming spring. Thank you for viewing this video and make sure to take time to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when Dell Outdoors uploads their videos every single week. We'll be bringing you educational videos like this one and also when turkey season gets here we'll be bringing you turkey hunts so you don't want to miss any of it. Also check out all of our great sponsors that helps us in the links below. Check out Tidewee.com where you can get a lot of great products over there. Just use that promo code Dale where you can get even a better percentage off through the promo code check out Stoger shotguns check out spring fever custom calls where you can get my signature line of matt dale old sly series of turkey calls you don't want to miss out on any of it and check out Kona scopes and all the other great uh, sponsors we have in the links below we really appreciate you watching this video until the next one you be safe out there and get that big old gobbler this coming spring